Okay. Today, we'll be discussing evolution and its processes. Let me just use... Okay, so all species of living organisms evolve. Individuals gain mutations and I'll pass it off to the uh, ch children of progenies. But these, the mutations can have advantages or disadvantages and, and make the population evolve in different directions. And uh, evolution supposedly is the unifying theory in evolutionary biology. Theodosius Dozemski once have said, nothing makes sense in biology except in the light of evolution. He also said at one point, God and science can be reconciled through the idea that the creator brought his plan, uh, plan through the processes of evolution. So Theodosius was considered a theistic uh, evolutionist. So the theory of uh, evolution by natural selection is a mechanism for species to change over time. And that species change, species change had been uh, suggested and debated well below, before Darwin. And Plato once thought species were static and unchanging, but other ancient Greeks expressed different ideas. By the uh, 18th century, naturalists reintroduced the idea that animals evolved and that some species went extinct. And in the 19th century, geologist Lyell argued that the earth was old and the gradual changes were possible. And Lamarck theorized that the changes that individuals experienced can be inherited, which causes species to change. And this idea was later discredited. And the mechanism, and Charles Darwin and is the really one who proposed a, a mechanism for evolution, but it was initially described set independently by Darwin and Wallace. This is Darwin here, this is Wallace here. What Darwin, Darwin observed on Galapagos Islands is that similar animals had distinct differences. For instance, finches had different beak sizes and shapes like seen here this one has a big beak this one has a tiny little beak so wallace and darwin both observed similar patterns in other organisms and darwin called this natural selection and argued that it was a outcome it was an outcome of three different principles the characteristics of organisms are inherited more offsprings you have are produced than, uh, than can survive. In other words, they have to compete for resources in order to survive. Offsprings vary in their characteristics and these variations are inherited. Both Wallace and Ar uh, Darwin argue that the offsprings with inherited characteristic allowing them to best compete for the limited resources will survive and have more successful offsprings than others. That makes sense because traits will become more numerous in the next generation, leading to changes in the population, and which is what uh, species uh, evolution is. And Darwin called this descent with modification. And one example of evolution seen in nature by natural selection is the Daphne finches that had two main variation of peak shapes, wide and deep, seen here, thinner and much thinner beak. So wider, thicker bill finches fed on big hard seeds while the thinner billed uh, finches fed on the smaller, softer seeds. But in the 1977, they experienced a severe drought and it had devastated the smaller, softer seed plants more than the large ones. 
as a matter of fact, that caused the larger billed birds to survive better, causing a shift in bill size year, two years later. So here was here is the average bill size peak depth, and in 1976. And in 1978, post, post, excuse me. In 1978, the big death has increased. So the population evolved. So natural selection requires uh, differences or variation to be present in individuals in a population. But these differences must be genetic or selection cannot occur. It cannot change the, ne change the next generation. Think about nutrition versus genes for given height. If your nutrition is good and if your gene is good, then you can be quite tall or vice versa. The genetic diversity in a population comes from two sources, mutation and sexual reproduction. And mutations have three outcomes. Mutation may reduce fitness, that is, lower likelihood of, of survival, meaning fewer offsprings. Mutation may increase fitness, higher survival, more offsprings. Or mutation may have no effect, neutral mutation. And uh, unique combination of gametes, going back to the meiosis again, lead to genetic diversity or genetic variability. So what is adaptation? Adaptation is the heritable trait that aids in the survival and the reproduction of an organism in a present environment. And this allows the population to match the environment that has changed over time. Variations in finch beaks change over generations along with the changing food availability due to the drought. Remember, big death increased after year of drought. A trait becoming uh, favorable depends on the current environment, which may change in the future. So a trait can be advantageous or disadvantageous, depending on how the environment changes. So what are the patterns of evolution? <clears throat> there is the uh, diversion evolution, and there's the conversion evolution. Wait, I have to, uh, I have to change my uh, font size on this panel. So let's start over here for this slide. So diversion evolution and conversion evolution. These are different patterns of evolution. Divergent evolution deals with two species evolving different phenotype or genotype from a common point. So the reproductive organs of flowers vary due to adaptation to different pollinators. So this is an example of divergent evolution. So conversion evolution, similar phenotypes arise from different structures independently in different species. So bat wings and insect wings are analogous structures. That, has, that have the same functions without the common origin. Wings of a hummingbird and ostrich are homologous structures that come from common origin with divergent functions. So this is an example of divergent evolution. This is an example of convergent evolution. So what is, what is a modern synthesis? Mendel's work was published in 1866, not long after on the origin of species by Darwin. <clears throat> but at the time, people didn't understand how gradual evolution could occur. And it was really the modern synthesis that integrated the genetics and evolution by 1940s into what is accepted by many today. And this describes how Evolutionary pressures affect the population's genetic makeup, which causes the population to evolve. There's the macroevolution, 
microevolution and macroevolution. Microevolution deals with gradual changes in population over time. And macroevolution uh, deals with the processes that gave rise to new species and higher taxonomic groups with widely divergent characteristics. So Mendel argued that unifactors are inherited from parents, like the alleles, remember? And the population genetics deals with what happens to the all of the alleles in a population. Remember, evolution is a change in population. Individuals only mutate. Populations with the indiv individuals with mutations evolve. And then uh, behind that phenotypic change has to be a genetic change. So in population genetics, evolution is a change in frequency of a given allele in a population. Example is ABO blood types. In, uh, in Jordan, country Jordan, uh, frequency of A blood type is about 26.1%. B is about 12%. O makes up 60.5%. And the B's frequencies will add up to 100%. And the change in this frequency distribution is what evolution is of that population. This is an example of micro evolution. Yeah, so natural selection can change the allelic frequency. More survivable, more survivable your alleles are, more abundant your alleles will be. And the allele frequency is a percentage. They all always add up to, they must add up to 100%, which means increase in one allele must mean decreasing the other alleles. And eventually highly beneficial alleles will become fixed in its frequency, meaning everybody has it, and the number will not change. Detrimental alleles will be eliminated from the gene pool. The sum of uh, gene pool is the sum of all alleles in a population. So the population genetics tracks how selective forces uh, change changes the uh, allelic frequency. Um, example of population genetics can be seen in this example or this uh, story. So the wing coloration of moths in response to soot covered tree trunks. Soot is from coal burning back in the indus early industrialization, early industrial revolution. This causes caused trees to darken uh, from soot. Soot would cover the tree trunks. So moths that were darker and stuck on dark trees survived better because uh, white tree, or the lighter uh, moths will be seen better. So that led to increasing darker colored moths in the population. And when factories stopped producing so much soot, eventually light colored moths return. This is another classic example of studying uh, population genetics and evolution in, po uh, in natural populations. Then why doesn't the dominant allele just eliminate all the other alleles? If there are no factors that affect the effect on allele frequency, those frequencies will remain constant from one generation to the next. And this leads into the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. We don't have to actually do the, do the equations and all that stuff, but we'll just mention the allele and genotype frequency remains the same generation after generation unless it changed them. So things stay the same unless it changes. That's what it basically says. If uh, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is observed, then the allelic frequency is not changing meaning no evolution. There are five forces that will disrupt this equilibrium. One is the natural selection, two, mutation, three, genetic drift, 
for migration into or out of the population. And finally, non-random mating. 